Welcome to the last video of this series about object-oriented programming and classes in Python. In this video you're gonna learn about properties and why they are so useful, but also you're gonna learn how to use the getter, the setter and the deleter when you need to change what Python does when you get the value of an attribute, when you assign a new value to it, but also when you delete it altogether. So what is a property? A property is a method that can be used as if it were an attribute, okay? Just keep in mind that if it's not really necessary, you shouldn't use properties. So let's first see how to convert a method into a property. So we are here with the introduction method. So let's say that for some reason we want to make it a property and we just need to use the property decorator, something like property, like that, as simple as that. So let's now create an instance a usual person one person john 44 london something like that and now we can access our introduction like this we can do something like print person one dot introduction so do you remember that when we use the method we needed to do something like that because it's like a function but in this case introduction is like an attribute we can access it like that okay so we don't need parentheses anymore so let's have a look at the first use case of properties. So I'm going to copy this because I'm going to use that and I'm going to delete all of this. So let's say that our introduction is created when you instantiate the object and is an attribute. So self introduction like that. Now, when you create the instance, you automatically create the introduction. But let's say that after a while, you want to change one of the attributes, maybe the age here you would have to change the introduction as well because the init method is only run once. So you've got this, okay, you run init, you've got this, you create this, you use self name, self age, and that's it. But if you update the name using, let's say, person1.name, etc., this is not updated because the init method is not called anymore. So you might be thinking, well, we can just use a method as we did earlier and remove the attribute. So we can go back to I was, like that. So something like this. You don't have the attribute, you've got your method and that's it. But let's say that someone is already using this class or maybe you use the introduction attribute in a lot of other places in your code. So you use something like this, okay, person one introduction because you have the attribute, but now you need to use the method. So you would have to change and do something like that wherever you use person one introduction, which is not really optimal. But if you make it a property, so let's go back here. Let's say that this is the old code that you have. So instead of actually going one by one and change and do something like this, you actually convert this method to a property like that. So now the old code still works as expected because now that introduction is a property, this works as expected. So you sort of update the introduction attribute so that it always has the updated name and age without breaking anything, okay? Of course, if you use a property, if you do something like this, this wouldn't work, but it doesn't make sense to actually do that. So, so cool, right? But what about getters, setters, and deleters? So first of all, Python doesn't need them, and you should use attributes normally, as we've done during the whole series, if you don't need to do some other things, okay, as we'll see in a minute. So let's actually delete this property here. So you would do something like you've got your instance. So to get the attribute, you would do something like person one dot name. To set the attribute, we would do something like person one dot name is equal to new name. And then to delete the attribute, and this is something that we haven't actually seen, but you just need to use the del keyword. So del person one dot name, something like that. But if you want to actually use the getter, setter, and deleter, you need to consider that the property is actually already the getter, okay? Because we are actually sort of getting the attribute. The property in this case is just used to then be able to use the setter and deleter. So really important, don't create methods like get something, set something, etc. because there are other ways to do this. The first way to do this is using the special methods like get ATTR, which stands for attribute, and set ATTR, which stands for attribute as well, but it's so much better and cleaner to use decorators. By the way, special methods were discussed in the third part of the series, if you want to have a look. So let's actually delete this. Okay, like that. Perfect. Let's say that we want to validate that the age is an actual number when you create an instance, but also when you change it. And at this moment, even a string would be valid. So first of all, let's create a property age. Property, that age, self, 
As you can see, I've used the same name, age and age here, really important. And this is the getter. So we just need to return the value, but we could do whatever we want here. Okay, in this case, maybe let's say I want to print something like print getting age, and then we need to return the value, but I'm not just going to return self.age, I'm going to use self underscore age, so a private attribute that I explained in the previous video, and I'll explain why later on. So something like self.age, like that. So let's now write the setup. And to do that, we need to use another decorator. So we need to use something like age setup. As you can see, we use the property name age, which is this one, and then we're going to define a function with the same name. So something like that age again, self, and then the value, okay? The value is the value that you're assigning to the attribute. When you do something like set.age is equal to something. And you could use another name, but value is used by convention. And here we can do all the validation we need and also whatever we want to do. So we can do something like print setting age, okay? Then we can do something like try int value self, age value. I'm going to explain it in a second. Value error. And then we're going to raise our own error. Type error. Enter age like that. Perfect. So basically, if the number can be converted to an integer, this is actually a number. So you assign the value to the private underscore age. But if you've got an error, which means that you don't have an actual integer, an actual number, then we're going to raise this error. So when we set the attribute age, we can actually validate the input, basically. So let's actually have a look. So person, again, John, 45, London. And this is going to work. As you can see, setting age. But if this were a string, as you can see, type error, enter a valid age. So we are sort of validating and here we could maybe use a try and accept. So here we could do something like try and then try to create thing, etc., etc. So you can do whatever. You know that you've got this error, the type error, if you don't actually enter the right age. And you can do the same thing for all the other attributes as well. So you may be wondering why we haven't used self age like this straight here, like self underscore age, okay, the private variable directly here. I'll explain you that as well after we look at deleters. But before we do that, do me a favor and like the video if you're enjoying it, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and also leave a comment so I know you got to this point, okay? So let's have a look at deleters now, and then I'll explain you why we use the private variable and also why we didn't use the private variable directly, as I said here. Okay, let's go back to the right thing, okay? So the deleter can be used when we want to perform some actions when we delete an attribute, or also if we want to make the attribute not deletable at all. So the decorator to use in this case is something like this. So age, deleter, like that. Same thing, so like that, self. And then here we could do some cleanup or whatever. In this case, I'm just going to print deleting age like that. And if we actually try to do person1.age, we actually need to write perfect. So as you can see, setting age, deleting age. So this is working. And of course, to actually delete something, you can set the variable to none. So something like, for example, cell so the private variable to none, something like that. Or maybe you can delete the private variable altogether. Okay, something like that. And if you want to protect the variable so that it cannot be deleted, you can raise an error in the deleter. So let's actually delete this. So you can do something like deleting age, or maybe you can actually remove this and raise an attribute error. And then age attribute which is actually a property, but for the end user is actually the attribute age. They access and use the property age as if it were an attribute, basically, okay? So age attribute cannot be deleted, something like that. And now if we run that, as you can see, attribute, age attribute cannot be deleted. You basically prevent the age attribute from being deleted. 
Okay, so as I explained in the previous video, private variables are not really private, but a Python programmer needs to know that if a variable is private, it should not be used outside the class. Okay, so something like this would be possible. So if you did something like person one dot age, okay, directly string, this would work, even though we're actually using a string and not a number because we are actually changing the value of the private variable directly and the validation is bypassed. So please don't use private variables like that, okay, outside the class. Use just person1.age and this throws an error, as you can see. Perfect. So let's get into the things that you might be wondering. So why are we using the private variable here, here, and we are not using self dot age directly and we can see that by using the age attribute directly so we can do something like age age like that perfect and now we can try to create the instance as we did earlier like that and let's see what we get we get recursion error maximum recursion depth etc etc but why let's have a close look in the init method here we are assigning a value to the self.age, right? But self.age is now a property. And in this case, the setter is called, so this is called directly when you assign the age to self.age, this is called. But in the setter, we actually assign the value to self.age again, which calls again the setter. And then it keeps doing that indefinitely, okay? It keeps calling the setter and then setting the value and then calling the setter, et cetera, et cetera, until we get the error, recursion error, because it keeps doing that too many times. So by using the private variable, we prevent that from happening because we're actually assigning the value to a private variable, which doesn't call the setter. The setter is called only when we use the self.age and not when we use self dot underscore age. So this is why we need the underscore to make that private. This is one reason. And then you might be wondering why we didn't use directly self underscore age here, like that, directly in the need method. The reason is really simple. When we create an instance, we want the value of the age, in this case, to be validated by the setter. So we want the setter here to be called. But the setter is only called when we assign the value to self.age. In this case, we are assigning the value directly to the private variable here, and the setter is not called and the age is not validated. So let's actually have a look. So let's say that we've got a string here and that shouldn't be valid. As you can see, it's valid because you don't get any error. But then if we try to assign a new value like that, this raises the error, type error, enter valid age. Now we actually get the error because we are assigning a new value to person one dot age and not person one dot underscore age and the setter is called because we didn't do something like that, but we did something like that, okay? But here, we're not doing this. We're actually assigning this value directly to the private variable. The setter is not called and it's not validated. So you need to do something like this. So even when you create the instance, and the init method is called, then this thing here, this assignment calls the setter and the age is validated even in the init method. Sometimes you see people doing something like that, but if you validate something, it doesn't make sense to have it like that. You need to use this way here, okay? Perfect. So this series on classes has ended. You'll find the link to the playlist containing all the videos of this series in the description box down below, and you should see it on the screen as well. And if you've already watched all the videos of the series, there is another video on the screen as well. And don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you soon. Bye.